information provided in this podcast should not be considered medical advice. We encourage all listeners to consult their healthcare professionals for medical concerns. Thank you. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of AS InfoShare. I'm your host, Enrico Bolanino. Today, I wanted to talk about a topic that has become extremely common on social media, especially in Facebook groups and uh, conversations that are going on on X, formerly Twitter. If you've ever searched for ankylosing spondylitis or HLA B27 online, you probably come across countless posts where people are discussing their test results, convinced that a positive or negative HLA B27 test will determine whether or not they have the disease. And that's just not the case. You might have seen it yourself. Someone shares their test results in an online group and asks, does a positive HLA B27 mean I have AS? Or maybe they've been told by their primary care doctor who isn't a rheumatology specialist that the test alone will give them a clear yes or no answer. But here is the problem. HLA B27 is not a definitive test for ankylosing spondylitis. And relying solely on this test or letting someone else rely on it can easily lead to a misdiagnosis or a delayed diagnosis. So it's easy to understand why so many people are looking for answers online. A positive HLA B27 test can be a big red flag, especially since about 90% of people with ankylosing spondylitis carry the gene. And if you don't have it, it's tempting to think that your symptoms must be caused by something else. But the reality is much more complicated. HLA B27 alone doesn't diagnose AS. In fact, only about five to 10% of people who carry the gene will develop develop AS, and many people with AS don't carry it at all. Another issue is that primary care physicians who are often the first point of contact for patients experiencing back pain or unexplained joint symptoms may rely too heavily on the HLA B27 test results to determine if a patient has AS. But here's where things get tricky. Not every doctor, even a well-meaning one, is fully equipped to diagnose complex autoimmune conditions like ankylosing spondylitis. They might not be aware of the nuances involved in early stage AS or non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis, conditions that don't show up on an x-ray or a standard blood test in the early stages. So if a patient tests positive for HLA B27, their primary care doctor might jump to the conclusion that AS is the cause. On the flip side, a negative HLA B27 test could cause the doctor to dismiss the possibility of AS entirely, even if the patient has all the clinical signs. This is dangerous because it could lead to a missed diagnosis which means people with real AS may not get the treatment they need until the disease has already caused permanent damage. So there's a couple of things that happens. A patient who has back pain may go to their regular doctor, their primary care physician, and back pain could be just about anything. There's a multitude of conditions that a back pain symptom could be. So when you go to the doctor, chances are they're going to prescribe you a muscle relaxer or something, or maybe send you for some physical therapy without getting fully diagnosed on what it is. A prescription like a muscle relaxer might ease the pain temporarily. And you might think, oh, I, you know, the flare up is gone or whatever it is is gone and I feel better. So it must just be chalk it up to something simple, chalk it up to just back pain or a pulled muscle or, you know, I might have just bruised something or did something. And then it comes again and you take the same pill and over and over again. And what ends up happening is the patient thinks, oh, I just need the pill again. I just need a a muscle relaxer for a couple of days or I just need some aspirin and I'm going to feel better. I just need, you know, aspirin or an NSAID like a ibuprofen or naproxen and I'm going to feel better. And they could go a long time just doing that. And, and that's what actually happened to me. I just went all the time. Whenever I felt back pain, I went and I just took my, you know, uh, an NSAID or something, whether it was aspirin, ibuprofen or naproxen, I took one of those medications to ease the pain, never getting the proper treatment. And what that does is you constantly take those NSAIDs and after a long time, they can really hurt your stomach. Now, a lot of times they say some of uh, AS is related to gut issues. So you're adding to the problem without solving the problem, without getting the proper treatment. 
And then if you're in the early stages, one of the things a doctor might do is send you for an x-ray. The problem with an x-ray is when you're in the early stage, not much is gonna show up in the x-ray. An MRI would be more appropriate, but because of insurance and cost, they usually go for the x-ray and a regular physician is gonna look at the x-ray. He's not gonna see much, so he's not gonna think much of it. He's not gonna send you to a rheumatologist. He's not gonna think there's much damage there. So you're dealing with those two problems. One, they're just giving you basic medication without treating the bigger problem and they're not recognizing anything is there because they're basing it all on an x-ray. And if it gets to the point where you do take a test and you go for an HLA B27 test, you could be one of the few people with AS who do not carry the gene. Remember, 10 out of every 100 patients who have AS will not have the gene. It's a 90% of the people who have AS will have the gene. 10% will not. That's a lot when you think about it. It might be smaller compared to the 90%, but it's still a lot. So there's still a good chance that you could have AS and not have the gene. That's why it's so important to get the full process of diagnosing the disease. But again, a primary care physician may not be looking exactly for AS when it comes to back pain because there are so many other possibilities and the majority of those possibilities are going to be a pulled muscle. So they're not really going to look at it. You have to understand the symptoms and it's, it's really about awareness and making people know that, okay, if you have chronic back pain, this is a possibility and you should get it checked out. And that's why the, you know, we just had recently uh, AS Awareness Day. And this, I think May is AS Awareness Month. And that's what it's all about. It's making people aware of this possibility and why it's so important to go through the full line of testing to see if it's AS and to rule out other possibilities. So what does it take to actually diagnose ankylosing spondylitis? Well, HLA B27 is just one piece of the puzzle. It helps raise suspicion, but it doesn't confirm anything. Diagnosing AS is about putting together the whole picture, a clinical history, symptoms, lab tests, and imaging studies. For instance, early AS might not show up on a typical x-ray. Doctors often need to rely on MRI scans to detect inflammation in the sacroiliac joints, a hallmark sign of AS, even when x-rays look normal. Here's the thing, AS is a progressive disease. The longer it goes undiagnosed, the more damage it can do to the spine, joints, and even other organs. A misdiagnosis or delayed diagnosis can lead to years of unnecessary pain, deteriorating quality of life, and even permanent joint damage. The HLA B27 test should not be seen as a yes or no answer, but as part of a broader evaluation. If a person has inflammatory back pain, limited mobility, or other classic symptoms of AS, they should be evaluated by a rheumatologist, someone who specializes in diagnosing and treating conditions like AS, and who can evaluate all the symptoms and test results to make an accurate diagnosis. If you or someone you know has been told by their doctor that HLA B27 is the deciding factor, it's important to advocate for a full evaluation. You should get a referral to a rheumatologist for a comprehensive exam. Be open to multiple tests, including blood work, x-rays, and especially MRI if you're still in the early stages. Understand that the HLA B27 alone doesn't mean you have AS, and a negative result doesn't rule it out either. If your symptoms persist, don't be afraid to push for further investigations. And remember, early detection and treatment treatment of AS can make all the difference in preserving your quality of life. So to wrap it up, the HLA B27 test can be useful, but it is far from the final word on whether or not you have ankylosing spondylitis. It's just one piece of the puzzle. When you're dealing with a condition like AS, which often presents with subtle symptoms, it's critical to look at the big picture and work with specialists who can guide you through the complex diagnosis process. Thanks for tuning in today. If this episode helped clear up some confusion or shed light on your own journey with AS, share it with others who might need to hear it. And as always, if you're struggling to get the answers you deserve, don't be afraid to ask for a second opinion. Take care and we'll see you next time.